Steve, can you hear me okay? Yeah, okay. So it must be uh, wherever she is there, I guess. So, um, so Steve, this will help you. Let me kind of go over some stuff, right? So uh, looking at the payment options in the book, you know, this is what we show option A, option B, option C, and the option C is 100 down, 30 months, 130 to a month, okay? So that's kind of the lowest option. Now, we tell them, hey, if you guys decide to join our program, we've got the bank to allow us to do an option D. So option D is no money down in 97 a month, right? Steve, I know you probably explained it that way, right? So let me, um, let me kind of tell you a possible scenario. So let's say that you are in a house, Steve, where there's absolutely no possibility of getting them to do the program. So they're going to, if they get a rainbow, they're just going to buy it, right? They're not going to be able to get it for free. Um, you know, and we run into those. Uh, it's usually the older people or, or whatever. But um, of course, you know, we, we want to get where we still sell them on doing the program. So I don't want to, I kind of hesitate training on this today because I feel like we're going backwards back to the old ways instead of trying to move forward. You know, when a customer says they can't do it right now, you know, just say, well, what do you mean you can't do it right now? We need to get good at overcoming their, I don't have the time or I'm not a people person and I hate people and, and I would be too shy, you know, and, and this or that and the other. So, so get this, right? So sometimes the customer, and I know you know this, Steve, they misunderstand and they think that you're asking them to go do 12 demos, right? Like become a rainbow dealer and go do demos, okay? And those are probably the people that are sitting there while watching you do a demo and you don't have a rider with you, right? Because if you've got a rider with you, they should understand that all you're asking them to do is go ride because that's what their friend sat there and did, right? But if you're by yourself, the only thing they're seeing is you actually doing the demo, right? So be careful when you're by yourself that you don't accidentally give them the impression you're trying to recruit them to come in and do 12 demos like we used to do on the 21. Now, I know you're explaining it that all you do is you book them and you ride with us, but I don't know that everybody hears that, right? I don't know that the customer hears that and processes that. So I think you got to like, say it like several times. Now you all got to understand something. I'm not trying to recruit you to become a rainbow salesperson. I'm simply asking you to set 12 appointments, get me in 12 homes. I'm going to do everything. And I just need you to go with me, right? The only reason I even need you to go with me is because you know the people and you're going to introduce me to the people and you're going to be there so that they trust me more, right? So that they so you can talk to them about what you love about your rainbow. So again, I'm not trying to recruit you to sell rainbows by any means, okay? I just need you to ride with me, okay, on these 12 appointments. I'm going to do everything. Like it's worth saying three, four, five times in different ways to make sure that they clearly get, I'm not trying to recruit you. We had a dealer last night that the customer and I'm not saying the dealer said it wrong because I know the dealer didn't say it wrong, but the customer still thought they had to do the demos, okay? We had a customer that bought a rainbow, Steve, from a very good uh, dealer, very good. I mean, as good as you, right? That I know knows how to explain it. Bought a rainbow, called wanting to return it, and their reasoning was that my health doesn't allow me to carry the machines in and do all that, okay? And it's like, wait, what? All right, they literally thought we were recruiting them to be a rainbow dealer. And remember, I know they were told correctly how it works, but they, they heard it the way they heard it, okay? So make sure, I'm just saying, it's worth over, over, over explaining. I just need you to ride with me. I'm going to do everything. The only reason I even need you to go with me is because you know the people, right? And you're going to introduce me and you're going to brag about your rainbow you bought and how you're getting your money back, right? So, I, I mean, I don't know any other, ten, find 10 more different ways to say it, but say it different ways to emphasize 
you're not becoming a rainbow salesperson. You're just riding with me as a customer to show another customer what you love about your rainbow. Okay. So anyway, all right. But if you get to the end of the demo and it's one you're not going to get a rider on and you show them option A, option B and option C, and then you explain option D if they want to join the program and they're like, well, I can't join the program, right? Then, and they're saying, I can't do, I can't afford a rainbow right now either because we got a lot going on. We got other bills right now. You know, what we teach to do, Ramin, when a customer says no, is we teach you to agree back off and confirm. And Steve, I know you've heard this and I've taught it 50,000 times in my rainbow career and you've heard it 10,000. But Steve, honestly, we haven't talked about this in two to three months, okay? So if just humor me and let me teach it, okay? Because I need to say it again. I need to, I need to get it back in my vocabulary, right? Believe it or not, Steve, I did a back kill yesterday on this meeting with Jessica Diedrich and forgot to hit the filters. I forgot to hit the filters in a back kill because I haven't trained on it. And in all honesty, I wasn't thinking clearly. I was thinking more about the meeting than I was the actual demo I was teaching. So, and, and I, I've done that plenty of times in my career. So anyway, so we have option B. So let me just go over all the payment options with you, right? So if they did a no money down, right? Zero down, then in a normal 48 months, then the payment's about $97 for 48 months, okay? And, you know, that would be a drop down, you know, and that's why we don't have no money down in our book and we don't have 48 months. We've only got 30 because the payment's 132, right? So if you have to call the office and get a better offer and come back and offer them no money down 97, then you're dropping the payments $30. And see, I think you're below the magical 100 when you offer that. And so I think that's enough of a payment drop. They're like, well, we couldn't do the 100 down with the 132, but if you could do no money down, 97, that's below 100, we could probably do that, right? So, so you remember, that's our best option because we don't pay anything for that. We've not done anything but did no money down and stretched the payments out 48 instead of 30, right? But if that doesn't work, okay, then, and I'm just putting all the options up here, then you know we've got a lower interest rate and, and we can do 8118 for 48 months, right? So if we absolutely had to drop the, the interest to 9.9, you know, we can lower that payment to 81, right? And and thank God we also have 6670 for 48 months. Okay, so we can even do zero percent interest, right? So each one of these costs more, right? So if you were to do a 6670, the bank is charging a boatload to us to do that, right? So that is our very last option that we're going to offer is the $66. It's like I'm leaving, the rainbow's packed up, there's no other way to get the rainbow. I, you know, heck, I tell you what. You guys get the rainbow tonight. Here's what I can do. I mean, it's it's we're to that point now, right? So, what this is, this again, this is reminding us of all the different payment options that we have in our pocket. But I want to keep them in my pocket, right? Because I don't want to offer anything other than option D and the program, right? But again, if they can't do the program, Carol, we're not going to get the program. They absolutely are 100% against doing the program and, and they can't do, you know, option C, 100 down, 132. The way you offer the options are super important, right? So first of all, it's always good to act like you've given up, okay? Well, so I understand, guys, uh, you know, always use two words, feel and felt, right? I can understand how you feel. And, you know, I'll be honest with you, if I felt that way, you know, I, I, I guess I would hold off and not get it tonight either. So let me get some stuff up, okay? And then we teach you to, to back off, okay? So here's one thing I learned a long time ago. Being pushy 
uh, does not work. Okay, let me put it a different way. Being pushy works uh, maybe for a minute, but they usually back out within the three days, okay? So, and we're not interested in that. We're, we're not interested in a temporary sale. We're not interested in making two trips to the house to not sell one, right? So, you know, the best option is just help them get it for free, okay? But if they absolutely are not going to do the program and they said they can't afford it, um, then I always say, well, I understand, and um, try to get a little information out of them before I back off. You know, when, did I hit you at a bad time? Is it, is it just a bad time financially? You know, and I listen, and they say they start telling me why it's a bad time financially, and, and I say, well, I understand, you know, how you feel, and, and, you know, honestly, if me and my wife felt that way, we'd probably hold off also, so I certainly see where you're coming from, so let me get some stuff up, okay? And they think I'm finished, and that I'm leaving, right? And, you know, we teach the agree that you understand, use words feel and felt. I understand how you feel, and if I felt that way, I'd probably wait also, okay? So let me get some stuff up. And then I teach back off. So agree, which is the A, because we're doing A, B, C. It's the A, B, C's of closing. The A, B, C's of closing. That we, we agree that we understand where they're coming from because we don't want them to feel awkward telling us no. You know, Ravian, I want you to know it's okay that you're telling me no, okay? I, I'm, not, I'm not saying you should say no. I'm just saying that I understand that you're telling me no, right? And I can understand how you feel, right? And if I felt that way, I mean, I'd probably hold off and not get the rainbow tonight either, right? I mean, it's hard to say those words for a salesperson, but but you got to be careful. What I'm, what I'm not saying is, I agree you shouldn't get it. See, I never said that. I just said, I agree that I understand how you feel, right? And if I felt that way, I mean, I'd probably wait too. So... It's all in your wording. I understand how you feel. Does it make it a fact that they can't afford it? It's an opinion that they can't afford it. Do you guys know there's a difference in a fact and an opinion? Right? It, it, there is. There's a difference in facts and opinions. Right? And so, you know, um, that was the big argument back when it went, when we're talking about wearing masks. You know, um, is it a fact that masks help? Yes. Is it opinion that you don't want to wear them? Yeah, okay. But that doesn't change the fact that they save lives, right? You know, I've, had, I've even had people say seat belts don't work, okay? Well, is that a fact or is that a your opinion, okay? See, I believe that to be your opinion. I think the data supports the facts that they work, right? So anyway, don't get mixed up facts and opinions here. When they're telling you they can't afford it, and I believe... They're given their opinion that they can't afford it, okay? I don't believe it's a fact. So don't make it a fact. Don't, don't back that up by saying, well, heck, you know, if I couldn't afford it, I wouldn't get it either. See, I don't say if I couldn't afford it. I say if I felt that way, I'd probably wait too, okay? And again, don't give too much validation to their excuse, to their objection, but give some level of understanding that I, I understand where you're coming from. And if I felt that way, I'd probably wait too. And you know, when if you think about, if you think about this, Ramin, when somebody gives you their opinion that mask or seat belts don't work, the only way I believe that you can change their opinion is to do it respectfully. Because you know, if you say, you say, absolutely, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Of course, seatbelt works, seatbelt, seatbelts work. See, that would offend them. They would probably put up a wall and not want to hear my side of anything, right? So I don't do that. I say, well, I understand where you're coming from because they are inconvenient. They, they wrinkle my clothes, right? They're a pain in the neck. I get that, right? And you know, if I felt that way, you know, I, 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 you know, I would agree with you. So let me go ahead and get some stuff up and let me respect your opinion, right? And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to give them some facts. I'm going to give them some data. 
I'm going to, I'm going to try to work on changing their opinion a little bit, right? To see things from a different perspective. See, closing a sale is the same. When they tell you they can't get it, I don't believe that to be a fact. I believe it to be their opinion, right? Here's another way of looking at that. Hear it this way. When they tell you they can't afford it, hear it this way. Pretend they said to you, Ravin, we love the rainbow. We loved it. And you know, we see our home. We need a rainbow. It's filthy in here. Our kids are crawling around in this. No wonder we've got all these allergies. You have done a wonderful job and we love you and we love the rainbow. But based on what you've told me so far, we don't see a way that we could work it in our budget. But, but hold on, Ravin, don't leave yet. Because if you could work with our budget, if you could give us more information, we might go ahead and get the rainbow tonight. I mean, but, but if you've got any more information, we'd love to hear it. So if they said it that way, when they said no, how, how would our attitude be? We would still be positive. We would still believe we can get that sale because they said, thank you. I love it. I want it. And based on what you told me so far, we can't see a way to do it. But if you've got other payment options, if you could work with our budget a little bit, we might keep the rainbow tonight, right? What if they actually said no in those words, okay? You see, Doris, we would still be positive, okay? So that's why when you get an objection, the most tactful way to handle a no is to say, I understand where you're coming from. I, I, I get that and I respect that, you know, and if I felt that way, Shoot, I'd probably hold off and not get one tonight either. So, uh, heck, let me get some stuff up, okay? And then that's where you want to grab your demo light. And I just start wrapping up my demo light, right? Okay? Act like, and I act like I'm packing up, okay? Because this is something that I do every demo is I wrap up my light. I either do it after I've sold a rainbow or I do it while I'm packing a rainbow up, right? I'm, I'm, I'm not selling it, right? So I've got to do this anyway, but it sure looks like I'm packing up and getting ready to go. And while I'm packing up, what I like to do, Ravin, is I like to get them to talk about what they liked about the rainbow. I like to get them to quit talking about their money problems, their financial problems, what they're going through right now. I want to get their mind off the negatives and back onto the rainbow, right? What it is they loved about it, right? And I'll be honest, because I'm respecting them and not being pushy, they like me. And because I'm taking the rainbow away from them, like I'm taking it with me, they start regretting not having been able to get it. So see, it does a lot of different things. If you just understand the psychology of selling, right? When they say no, you don't. You don't keep pushing. You just simply say, I understand where you're coming from and try to maybe get some more information from them, by the way, right there. Because if you say, did I just hit you at a bad time or is the payment too high? What, what is it that, that, that's holding you back? And, and, if, and if they can tell you what it is, usually, Ravin, you can tell me what I need to know to sell you the rainbow, okay? If I'll just be a good listener, so if I'll just respect you and say, I understand you're not getting a rainbow night and that's not a problem. But if you don't mind me asking, you know, did I just catch you at a bad time or, or what, what's going on right now? Right. And if she says, well, you know, we just paid for a vacation or, you know, his work's always slow during the summer or, you know, it's always nine times out of 10, it's a bad time when they're saying they can't afford it. It's usually because they say it's a bad time right now, right? It's not normally saying we don't like the rainbow, that, you know, we just love dirt, okay? I don't ever hear anybody say we just love dirt, okay? Usually they're telling me they love the rainbow 
and that I did an awesome job and they're going to get it later, right? You ever heard that one before? We're going to call you back, right? Well, so, uh, but anyway, so, but I like to try to find out that I just hit you at a bad time or, or kind of what's going on, right? And then they, they, they say, you know, I, it's a bad time because of this. And sometimes I like to lead the customer into telling me they could do it in a couple months, right? So how do you lead them into saying they can do it in a couple of months? Well, you know, you just say, hey, guys, I hate I've hit you at a bad time. And, and that's when I'm still sitting here, by the way. Okay. And they're saying it's a bad time. They're telling me and I'm listening and, and I'm, we're just talking. And, and um, if you don't mind me asking, Ravine, when do you feel like you might be in better shape? Are you thinking like a couple of days, a couple of weeks or more like a couple of months? Are you thinking a couple of days, a couple of weeks, or more like a couple of months? Are you thinking a couple of days, a couple of weeks, or more like a couple of months? See, if you give them a choice between a couple of days, a couple of weeks, or more like a couple of months, we all know every customer is going to say a couple of months, okay? That's why we stopped at a couple of months. They're going to go with the longest option. Or if you said you're thinking like a month, or like a year from now, they'll all pick a year. So definitely don't give them those choices. I like to say, are you thinking a couple of days, a couple of weeks, or more like a couple of months? Okay, and that's when they'll say, yeah, probably probably in a couple of months, maybe in, in August or September, um, you know, we'll call you back, leave us your number. And I say, okay, sounds good. Well, you know, guys, I understand where you're coming from, but if I felt that way, I'd probably hold off uh, also. So. Let me get some stuff up, okay? And then that's when I, I back off, okay? So again, we're teaching the ABCs of closing. So the A is where you agree and you understand because what's the problem if you start attacking them? They get defensive. What's the problem if you offer them a lower payment? They get defensive because they feel like you're not going to take no and here you are going to be pushy, okay? See, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to re use the reverse close. I'm going to understand, agree, and I'm going to make it look like I'm leaving, right? And I'm packing up. So I'm going to grab my light, and I'm going to start wrapping up my light. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to get them talking about what they liked about the rainbow. I already found out it's a bad time. You've already told me in a couple of months. And I said, I understand where you're coming from. And if I felt that way, I'd probably not get a rainbow tonight either. But let me get some stuff up. And then I start packing up, and I start wrapping my light. Okay. While I'm wrapping up my light, I will typically ask the husband first. So, Bill, out of everything I showed you tonight, what'd you like most about the rainbow? Right? And he starts telling me, well, I like the shampooer. Man, I really like the way it got that carpet clean. It looks like new carpet. Or I really like the way it got the dirt out of the carpet because our vacuum's not doing that. You know, whatever it is he says he liked most about it, what I do is I say, you know, it's funny you say that, Bill because that's actually what I said, or I'll say that's what most men tell me, right? I'll make him feel good about whatever it was he told me there, right? Um, but um, because, you know, really that's what most men say, Bill, because if you're going to take your time to vacuum, you want to get your dirt up. It, I always say it'd be the same thing as you and I getting out here on our lawnmower, right? And it wasn't cutting the grass. I mean, how excited would we be to ride the mower all over the yard if the grass wasn't getting cut. There's no way we do that. And that's kind of the same thing Mary's doing. She's vacuuming here. It's making a sound, but it's not actually picking up and getting the dirt out, is it? So Mary, what was your favorite thing about the rain? I mean, what'd you like best? And she might say, I just like the way it cleaned the air, or I love the way it smells, right? So, you know, Mary, that's funny you should say that because that's what most women say because we do want our homes to smell clean. And the reason that our homes have an odor, believe it or not, is because of all the bacteria that's living in our floors, living in our furniture, because we got all this, this bacteria and germs, all this dirt, okay? So if we can get the dirt out, right there alone, our houses are gonna smell cleaner, but having the rainbow with those fragrances and that green giver is awesome for killing germs. But it sounds like you really like the rainbow. And I'll stop and I'll say, so it sounds like you really like it, right? And Carol, they'll just say, we loved it. You did a good job, right? 
So what I did there is I got them like the relax. They're not on the defensive because they think I'm going to push them, right? So I agree that I understand where you're coming from, right? And I ask them, when do you think you might be in better shape? A couple of days, a couple of weeks, or a couple of months? And they normally pick the longest one a few months, right? And I say, well, I understand that. Well, guys, if I felt that way, I'd probably wait too. So let me get some stuff up. I stand up, I grab my light, and I start wrapping my cord, and I ask him what he liked best. And then I comment on what he said he likes best, tell him that's what most men say, or that's what I said. And then I ask Mary what she liked. And then I'll use some logic about how that makes sense. And if we could get the germs and bacteria out, the house would smell better. And then I will see. So remember we're teaching A, B, C. So the A was agree and understand their objection. The B was back away from them and start wrapping up and ask them what they like best. And then the C is this, right? We do it with our kids, right, Carol? They tell you they don't want, they're not, they don't want to clean the room because of this, right? Or, you know, they don't want to do this because, of, so we say, listen, and then you take that objection away, go clean your room, right? So it's the same thing with an adult. When they say they can't right now because of this, I say, well, let me ask you this. After I ask them what they're not best about it, and wrap it up before. I'll say, Carol, let me ask you this. I know you love the rain, honey, and I hate to hit you at a bad time, but other than the fact I've hit you at a bad time, is there anything else that's keeping you from getting the rain better? No. I mean, is that the only thing? Mm -hmm. So it wasn't anything that I did or anything. No. It was just a bad time. Mm -hmm. So if this were maybe September or October, y'all would have done it. Sure. Okay. So if this were September or October, y'all would, you, you would have kept the rain better. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right. Well, listen, the reason I asked that because I rented this before. Let me tell you what I can recommend, right? Now I'm going to come back with the back side of my 20-year sheet. I'm going to flip my 20-year sheet over on the back, and I'm going to fill it. I'm going to write down the three months deferred option, right? So when you write out three months deferred, now, by the way, all right, can I say this? Because we have a revenge. She's driving down the road. She's probably going down 485, doing 80, all right? And we have uh, Jessica up front, and she's answering the phone. We have Ben Ola. I've been, oh, we have Ben uh, Kaiser, sorry, you said we got him, Ben Ola. Uh, we have Ben there, he's listening. And we have Carol, right? Um, but when I teach this crap, right? I've been teaching this a long time right here, right? And I felt, I'll, I'll be honest, I, I, I thought I did probably really, really good today teaching this, right? This is one of the best teaching lessons on this I've ever done, right? I mean, I've taught this plenty of times but I've screwed it up when I'm teaching it, right? I'm not emphasizing certain things. I've not done the ABC in a simple way that people can get it. Yeah, i really done good to me, right? But usually when I teach this, Carol, the dealer goes out on the demo and the customer says they can't do it right now. And the dealer says, well, here's what I could do. I can defer your payment for three months. Everything I taught them, they didn't do. Like they just offered three months deferred. The only part of the training class that they actually listened to was when I told them we have a three months no payment and then you offer it to the customer. That's like out of everything I said, that's what they got out of that, right? See, here's the thing. If you offer three months deferred when they're telling you no, they're going to say no again, at least nine times out of 10, right? But if you will follow the steps of agree, back off, and now we're on to the C, which I'm getting ready to teach, is confirm if you do those steps and then you offer three months deferred and then you close the sale, yes, it'll work. But there's two things people don't do. They don't do the steps and then when they offer three months deferred, they sit there and they say, what do you think would that work? Okay, that ain't how you close it. If I'm going to offer three months deferred, I'm going to say, and based on what you told me, Carol, that'll help you because you said you could do it in October and you wouldn't have a first payment till October. So this is having your cake and eating too. You can go ahead and get the dirt out. And let me ask you a question. If you had a, dirt, a pile of dirt, instead of being spread throughout the whole house, Carol, it was in a pile in the middle of the living room and it was two foot high, right? And you could see it. You literally had to walk around a pile of dirt and dust and filth and pet hair Right? It's just sitting there, and everybody that came over saw this. 
how long would you want to wait to get the dirt out if it were in a pile? No, you would get it out right away. You wouldn't say, hey, let's wait till September to start getting. No. So you, you'd want to get the dirt out tonight anyway, right? So let me get let me get a little information, and I'll just get you qualified for that. Guys, what is your address out here? Yeah, I just assume they're getting it. I assume they're not lying to me. I assume they're telling me the truth, and I say, let me get some information. What is your address? Let me get you qualified for that deferred. Yeah, I just assume they're getting it, right? See, it makes saying no really, really hard for them. I mean, they're like, where am I going to go with this? Oh, my God, he's took away this objection. He's, uh, he just, I already put my foot in my mouth and said we could get it in September and October, and now he's pushing the first payment out September, October. Oh, my gosh. And then he just asked me if you could see the dirt. It was in a pile. There's no way you'd want to wait three months to start getting it out. Right? You want to get it out right away. Oh, cool. All right. So let me grab some information here. I'll get you qualified. What is your address? Like, that's how you do it. You don't just when they say, well, we can't get one right now. It's a bad time. Well, what if I could get you three months without a payment? No. See, that's the reason you see that three months to burn don't work. In fact, nothing works. Right? Because you're trying to push the customer. You don't even, and you come to meetings and you say, I don't want to be pushy, but then you go right out in a home and you go and you be pushy because you don't know the steps, okay? Or you don't respect the steps. You've got to respect the steps, agree back off, confirm. There's only one reason, Carol, I would teach you to do it this way, and that's so it will work. I'm not going to sit here and train you on something that's not going to make you money, right? Knowing that we make money together, right? So, um, Here's the problem. I'm going to say it this way. You might get this, might not, might make sense, might not, because I might not be able to explain it. But I've been on the phone with people before, like your customer, not your customer, but a customer, right? Talking to them about what they like best about rainbow. And I have the same script. Have you ever seen a rainbow before? Did y'all get a lot of dirt up? What kind of back hunter you got? Did y'all have hardwood carpet? What y'all got? Okay, awesome. So he would just hit you at a bad time. I knew Carol was saying you liked it, you know, and then they tell me, and then I say, well, so is that the only thing you hold me back? Well, let me tell you this. Here's what the company lets me do, right? So I've done that, and I'll be in the middle of explaining three months deferred, and I'll say, so that way you wouldn't have a first payment due all the way to October. No, we can't do that either. Like They jump right in and say, we can't do that either. Like talk over me while I'm still even offering it. Well, that's a complete and utter gonna be a no, no matter what I offer. I've even done this before. Well, so, and your payment would only be $15 a month. No, we still can't do it. Okay. I've actually told a customer your payments would only be $15 a month. And Larry looked at me like, huh? He's sitting there. No, you still can't do it. Okay. Well, let me talk back to Carol. Okay. Yeah, Carol, they're not going to go rainbow. Yeah. And here's why. She didn't even hear me. The customer didn't even hear me offer 50. Because she's saying, no, 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 just like that. Okay. And the reason they're doing all this is because we're not following our steps. When they say no, we're supposed to say, I understand, and back off. Maybe pull more dirt, right? And then show them this, the rainbow mate. And say, if you go and get the rainbow tonight, I'll still get you three months deferred. And I'll give you this rainbow mate with it. That's $100 out of my pocket. Because see, when they say no to three months deferred, I'm not leaving. I'm going to clean the cushion with the rainbow mate. And I'm going to pull the black cloth. And then I'm going to sit here and I'm going to explain how this stuff is gritty. And it ruins the finish on your furniture. That's why your fabric starts to get thin and starts to wear. It's because that grit cuts the fabric just like it does in your floor. And, you know, uh, if you took everything in here, the rainbow protects your hardwood, your carpet, your furniture, and you put it on one side of the scale and you put the rainbow on the other, which one do you think would outweigh which as far as price? I mean, this these hardwoods, <laughs> 5000 bucks. That couch, 2000 bucks, right? I mean, you know, so the rainbow, it protects all that. So it's an investment. I'll tell you what I'll do, and then I literally take the rainbow. And I, I'll say, just so y'all have everything you need, I'm going to go ahead and let her have that with the rainbow. And she takes that. And I'll still get you this three months deferred, and y'all could go ahead and be getting the dirt out. And Bill, let me ask you a question. If she want to go ahead and get the rainbow, you wouldn't get mad at her, would you? If she want to go ahead and get this condition out, I mean, you wouldn't fuss at her or nothing, right? I mean, yeah, that would be my next overcoming the objection if they said no to three months deferred. 
they're going to have to tell me no three times before I leave. I get three no's before I leave. Three. One of our dealers used to have three coins. He always kept them in one pocket. When he got his first no, he'd move them to the other pocket. He said, I got two more things to offer. And then when he offered one and it said no, he'd move it over here. He used to call me and say, I've got all three coins in my right pocket, Jay. Well, I'm getting ready to leave. They told me no three times, right? Three is the bare minimum number of no's. I guess it would be four if you think about saying no to free. Ben's had two customers, Ben, that said, I'm not going to do the free thing, but I am going to buy it. Yeah. And, and, and Ben comes in, he says, so here's what the customer said. I don't want it free. I want to pay you for it. He said, it's mind blowing. Right? And I said, well, Ben, what you got to get better at is explaining the free thing where it sounds less complicated, less time consuming, simpler, easier, funner. There has to be a reason why they would choose to spend 3000 over getting it for free. Well, these people are older and were they retired? Okay, so then they don't have to work during the day like the young people. So what do they do all day? Why could they not ride with us on 12 between now and New Year's? Six months, right? And I said, I, I know, Ben, you ain't going to get everybody doing it. I, I, I'm just talking to you, right? But I want you to think that way, if nothing else. And you're never going to get everybody to do it. I know that. But what harm is it for us to keep talking like this in the office and keep like that attitude going that everybody should want to do it? And, and that's dumb that they paid for it, right? So, but... But again, the C, so when I'm over here wrapping up, he tells me what he liked best, she tells me what she liked best, and I tell him, you know, that's what most women say, that's what most women, whatever. I say, guys, it sounds like you really want the rainbow, and you love it, and you see the need for it. Carol, let me ask you this. Other than the fact that I've hit y'all in a bad time, now, that, that you, know, you got a lot on you, like that. Is there anything else that's keeping you from getting the rainbow other than just the bad timing? I mean, you like the rainbow. You, oh, you did a good job. We love it. So it's just a time. I mean, like, I'm going to, like, drill them. It's the only thing. So if this were September or October, you would have you would have gotten it. Yeah? Okay. Like, you got to think. I'm going to make them say yes. If it were September or October, we would have gotten it. Okay. See, you know, you're setting up. The three, didn't you say, well, here's what I can do, right? I've run into this before. Well, let me tell you what I'd recommend, right? And I would have this already written out, okay? Or I would sit here and write it out. And I'd write down 35.9890. And I'd say by purchasing today, you do get a $600 savings. You get rainbow from your 998. Carol, you might get things on sale, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I've never had anybody come to me and say, hey, you like this jacket? I paid three times what it's what it normally costs. Well, no, I've had come people and you like this jacket? Half price. They have a sale going, right? You like that's what we hear, right? So the rainbow's on sale tonight. But here's what we can do: we can do no money down tonight. So instead of having to put the hundred dollars down, we can do no money down next month, which is August, because of your timing. We wouldn't pay anything. The next month, which is September, again you wouldn't pay anything. And then in October, when you said what? When you said you could get it anyway. Yeah. So you got to use their words to close the sale. You use the objection to close the sale. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, and, and that's strange that you, you, you use their no, but I, I think it's like like um, like allergies, right? They actually take the allergen to, to make the allergy medication. So the, 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 the solution is in the problem. <laughs> okay, so let's take the same thing here. Let's say, so, and, and, and you said yourself, y'all could do it in October. So we can set up either we can do 48 months at 97 or you can do 36 at 136. Now, I would recommend you doing the 97. And if you want to pay 136, you could because almost every penny you send in over, all I'm doing is talking. You could say anything right here, but I just keep talking, right? And you, but every, almost every penny you send in over the 97 would go toward the principal. But if you have a month where money's tight, Carol, you don't have $136. You've got to send, you just send a 9070, right? But the main thing is, if I could defer your payment for 10 years, it, it wouldn't matter if you never use the rainbow. So Carol, if you had the rainbow, would you use it or take care of it? And, and Bill, knowing Carol would use it, I know you'd want her to have it. 
So let me get some information. Would you want to do the 97 or the 136? Again, I recommend the 97. So again, the only reason I even wrote down two choices was so I could say, do you want to do A or B, which one? And I don't have to look at them. I can look at my paper and it's either you want to do that yes or that yes. Mm -hmm. Now, the way, see, I didn't ask a yes, no. I asked a yes, yes question. Mm -hmm. So here's a yes, no question. So what do you think, Bill? Would that work? Would either one of those work for you right there? Would either one of those work for you? You know you're going to get more people to say no to that question than you would to say, so which way work best? You want to do the 97 or the 136? Again, I recommend the 97. Okay, so, you know, listen, I said this yesterday and I'll say it again today. I, this isn't going to work 100%. In fact, probably only going to work like a third of the time. A third of the time, you're going you're gonna to be able to turn a no into a yes using this. A third. I know I'm not talking about that many because you actually sell everyone show anyway, Carol, but sometimes you don't. That's right. Right? And, you know, if we could just get one extra sell a month, was it one extra, one extra sell a month, right? We just get one extra sell a month, and that was an extra seven, eight, six, six hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jeff, that's a car payment. That's a, you know that will pay all your all your meals all month or whatever, right? So, um, someone taught me this years ago, and like the first time I did it, I was scared. I, I said I'm gonna try it. And I, I screwed it up, and then they said no, but I felt better. When I left the house, I said, you know what? I made some progress, mm -hmm. right? I went further than I've been going, and, and it, it, I don't know how many times it took me, but I, got, I sold one with it. I'm like, hey, that one felt really good because mm -hmm. I did that, mm -hmm. right? That wasn't, you know, Steve, and I love Steve. He's not on here. Steve went with a rider yesterday, Michelle. Michelle, and he said, he was talking about the program at the beginning. The lady says, my husband has uh, dementia, and I can't leave him and do the program. Mm -hmm. Those are the situations I'm talking about, right? And she said, uh, and, and I have a good backing. And then Michelle, the writer, spoke up. And, and, and y'all know you've got a story like this, Carol. But Michelle spoke up and said, you won't believe the dirt this thing will get up. I could not believe the dirt they found in my house. And then the lady says to Steve, well, this rug, I took it outside myself, washed it. Uh, it's clean. He said, I put two little cloths in the visualizer and back in four strokes, pulled the dirt out. She said, it was that thick. And she said, do you have payment options? He said, I told her the payment options. She picked option C and I sold a rainbow. I said, Steve, did you, did you, did you do any more demo? I said, you just saw me. I said, why are you sweating so much? He said, because when I started doing the paperwork, I don't know. I got I get excited when I make a sale. And it's the adrenaline that makes me sweat. He said, I was in that house that 45 minutes. 100 percent credit. 100 Uh so I mean that happens, right? But guess what you can't make a living on? Those. Because there ain't enough of them, right? They're nice. We love it, right? But ain't enough of those. you got to learn. to, And, you know, fortunately, you know a lot of this stuff, Carol. Ben knows a lot of this stuff. And, but, but there's people on here that are new that need to know this. You know, they're, you know what they're doing? They're doing the demo. They're showing the payment plan. The customer's saying no. And they're calling the rainbow office. And they're saying, Larry, take the wheel. And close the sale, right here, 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 here. Talk, talk to him. Hold on, hold on. Hey, he wants to thank you, right? And then we're supposed to close that sale for that dealer, right? And, and we do some, but 
it's not as effective. It's harder to say no to you face to face. The person would sweat on his brow. That's worked really hard, digging dirt, that sees the dirt, sees how much they need it, than it is to say no to the person on the phone. They never met, can't see. Who is this? I'm already there, right? And let me just get, you know, let me get them off the phone. So, but it's easy to say no to you if you say, would that work for y'all? Would either one of those work for you? It's still easy to say no to you. But to make it hard to say no, you say, so which one's going to work best? And we'll do the, the 97 or 136. I, I, again, I recommend a 97. That's what I would do. And I, and I just wait. I don't look at them. I just wait, right? And if they start going back and forth, what do you think, honey? Do you want it? You know, if, if he says, do you want it? What she says is going to make her break this deal, right? Mm -hmm. It's up to you. She says that. I'm like, crap. Okay. Mm -hmm. She says, well, you know I do. That's going to be a yes, right? But if she says, it's up to you, I don't want you to, like, get mad. Mm -hmm. And I say, well, you know, if you don't mind me jumping in, you guys sound just like my wife and I, right? So, Carol, when we saw it, we were sitting there trying to look at each other, you know, should we, should we not, right? Should we, should we spend the money, right? And you know what the person that showed us the rainbow pointed out? And I grabbed my 20-year sheet that we were actually going to spend the money anyway. So the question's not, should you guys invest in a rainbow? The question is, would it make more sense to invest the money or waste the money, right? You know, again, if you had a pile of dirt, if you haven't already used that one, okay? Or you can say, hey, Mary, what was your favorite fragrance? She says, well, I like the berry. You like the eucalyptus, right? I'm just tell you what I do. Something I do for all my customers. These actually don't come with the rainbow. They're $9 a bottle. And if you need more, you can call. Okay? I download an app on your phone where you can shop and order them online, right? But I give you these with the rainbow. I'm going to say I give you those with the rainbow. If I do that, they're going to take them, right? And I say so. That way you have those. And just you can go online and order rest any more you need, okay? So let me grab a little information. I'll get you qualified. You want to do the 97? I just, I just keep going, you know? And Carol, if they're not going to buy a rainbow, they're going to say that. Okay. Yeah, and like you got to worry about that. If they're not going to get it, they're going to tell you that, right? Um, but if they said, Jay, we, we, I just think we still need to wait. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I know you can defer our payment, but you know, you never know. Something could come up and we not have the money and then y'all have to come back and pick the rainbow up. And, and, uh, so I just, just to tell you what, let us call you back, right? Okay, okay, that's what I'm talking about when sometimes they say no to that. I say, well, I understand. All right. <clears throat> well, uh, hey, well, let me go uh, dump this water bowl, right? And this is where I actually go dump my water. So I go outside here, right? So they told me no now twice, Bill. They told me no, and then they told me no to the first. So this is where I go dump the water. And when I come back in, they kind of are your sink. And I go in and get just a little bit of water enough to cover the bottom, mm -hmm. right? Not a full water bottle. I'll say, so, uh, uh, so I always do when, how, who, right? So let me ask you this, Tom. When do you think y'all are uh, seriously going to get a rainbow? When, how, who. So it's ABC and then when, how, who. 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 We got John Hoops on stage down there in Charlotte this weekend. And we said, John, teach us closing, overcoming objections. He would have done this word for word, 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 word for word. He would have said, "What happened?" He would have read it on the board. We have who next, right? So first one was Avery, ABC. Now we're going to do when how who, right? And it's when do you think you're going to get married to the rainbow? And uh, and when y'all get it, y'all probably do the payment plan like we did, of course, right? We should probably do the ninety-seven or the one thirty-six. Ninety-seven, yeah. Okay. And when y'all get it, y'all gonna get it for me, right? Since I come out here and did all this work, okay. Right. So when, how, who, when do you think you're going to get a rainbow? How would you pay for it? You know, and who would you get it from? Right. Which is a joke, really. And we all get it. Y'all going to get it from me. Right. Since I come out here and did all this work. And they say, oh, yeah, we're going to call you. I said, great. I'll tell my wife you said that. 
Okay, so anyway, anyway so uh, listen, one thing I forgot to show you during the demo is this little rainbow thing, right? So again, they told me no twice. Mm -hmm. I've got the rainbow hooked back up. We're going to clean some more, right? Mm -hmm. Now, but, but it's all in how you do it. I forgot to show you what? This one attachment. Mm -hmm. And you definitely want to get this when you get a rainbow in a few months. Mm -hmm. It's called the Rainbow Mate. And it's really, really good for getting that pet hair off that furniture, right? Have you ever seen this demo? Let me show you something here. This is going to blow you away, right? You're actually going to learn something. You're going to be like, dang. All right, so check this out. I mean, that's hopeful, the, the, the result here. We're going to see. Now, so you've got 30 black cloths at this point, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't have any. Get some Jessica, where are you at? Can you come here? Front desk. You want to come up here and see this real quick? Take three minutes. Can you hear me? Yeah. You want to come in here for three minutes and watch this? Sure. Okay. Yeah, you can come here, We'll find it. It looks a little different than that, but yours got lights on it. <laughs> you might not care. We'll find it. We'll look. You know what the rainbow make is a uh, attachment that is uh, really good for helping you other people in front of uh, pets. Right, so let me just deal with dirt. The only reason I'm doing this is to do dirt. Because you would have 30 cloths, I don't have it. Show the rainbow mate. You know, again, I came back in. I said, "Wow, who?" Right? Mm -hmm. And they're saying, um, "In a few months, or whatever, mm -hmm. they do paint plan, whatever." So we go get y'all to get it for me, right? So I come back and do all this work. Also, mm -hmm. I tell my wife to say that. Also, hey, listen, when you get your rainbow in a few months, you may want to look at getting one of these. This is called the rainbow mate. It's a miniature version of the power head, but it's for your furniture, it's for your carpeted steps. Work great on your van out there, your mini van, right? Awesome. And so let me just kind of show you how this works right here. All right. And you know what we want to do here. Okay. So one thing you can do is say what so the rainbow comes with a standard off holster brush, right? Yes. So you'd have all this out of the box. So bear with me just a second. So grab your standard oil washing brush. So let me show you how the standard oil washing brush works. Okay. Can I get you to do me a favor and just to hold this? I get you to hold it just like this. Cool. All right. See, if you look at your fabric, there's not dirt on top of it. There's dirt kind of that in, right? So if you take the rainbow, so we got to kind of form the dirt through the fabric. Okay, you see that? See how you're not getting much dirt through the fabric? Okay. But because the rainbow made actually has the meter bar, you've got the agitation, right? See the difference? See the difference and how much better it cleans? So it's great for your furniture. Okay, so let's do this. Let's take that patch that's going to put a cloth in here. That makes sense. So I've shown the difference in the regular off washer brush and the rainbow bag, right? And I say, so you want to get one of these when you get your rainbow, right? And then I'm going to put two cloths in here and we're going to vacuum the couch. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to do is have her vacuum the couch now with the rainbow bag, or I'll vacuum it for five seconds. And then I'll turn it off. There'll be tons of tons of stuff out of the furniture. I'll uh, say, so see how much better this tool right here cleans than the regular upholstery brush. Look at that. That's crazy. Isn't it? You know, if you look at this, it does look kind of like powder, right? But if you look down in it, you'll notice it's kind of gritty. See, what that stuff actually does to your fabric is the same thing the dirt does to your floor. As you sit on it for years, it tends to cut the fabric. 
you can see the fiber will picking up here off your couch, right? That's what causes uh, your, your fabric to get thinner, you know, and you kind of, it kind of wears, right? So if you took everything to rainbow protection, hardly the carpet, it's furniture, and you put it on one side, it's going to put the rainbow on the other, which one would outweigh which as far as like the price? And you got some nice stuff here, right? And you obviously have a vessel to protect it, right? So it's just not getting the dirt, right? I'll tell you what I'll do. Now, so if the problem was with all they needed more time, without paint, I would come back with a six months ago. So I would lay this down, I wouldn't throw that in. I would grab my paper and say, I'll tell you what I can do. Just to give you more time. I can push your first payment all the way out. So I would offer that if they needed more time. Right? Because I see the wind when I do. It was probably first year. So I know I need to actually offer the first payment for the first year, right? But if it's still, this is still, makes sense. Mm -hmm. Then I would come back and say, okay, what I'll do. This is a hundred dollar package. So you have to do a new chance plan. I'm just going to do that with this. I've come to run it. That costs a hundred dollars. Can you make six hundred? Okay. And then, but then again, if I get that, it's still going to call you this thing. I can't say no to that. Mm -hmm. I want to do it, right? I'll say, so which way you want to do it? You want to do 97 or 97? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm still going to close this mm -hmm. one, right? But by building a little bit more value in the product, that definitely is. Yeah, I might can get the sale. So um, you'll notice I had two cloths mm -hmm. with the dirt on top of the second. Mm -hmm. You do that, it won't suck any other three of this thing. And you want it not. Pull any of the three. If you have just one call, it'll pull something through. So I want two calls thick, and then I'm gonna have, I got them holding it, then I'm gonna take that one that's just gonna beat the crap out of it and pull it right through. Yeah. Okay. So that's a good way to show the rainbow baby. Absolutely. And go value it. All right. But again, I saved the rainbow make for my closing. Well, see, you don't show it because I don't show it either. Too. But yeah, you show it. I do it on the stairs if they have carpet seats. Yeah. I will pull it out and use it. But I show this on my bed. Close the sale from uh -huh. the very bottom. Okay. So. See there, Carol. You drove and you learned something today. That was good. Thank you, guys. Yeah. You better learn that. What?